We're Ilya and Azra, and after finally purchasing our first van, we proceeded to repair some of the major dents and rust spots, remove the old flooring and panels, and install two windows. While Azra is in Spain on her student exchange, it's time to get my hands dirty with insulating the van. Welcome to Van Lifea. Okay, so I have a confession to make. All these videos, the whole vlog, is late by like over three months. I've been filming the whole process, the whole progress, and I just don't have time to edit it. So at one point I had to choose whether I'm gonna be focusing on the van to finish it before summer and doing less of the vlog stuff. And that's essentially what I chose. Um, so that's probably why you've seen snow and mentioning cold and things like that, even though it's like June, because those are shots from back in March. So long story short, we're in the final stages. It's pretty much done. There's a couple things left and then we're gonna go into the paperwork and hopefully this year be able to do a road trip with it. But anyway, next step in the storyline is talking about the design of the van, what I did, because I've been researching and planning for years, why I did it, so I'm sure someone out there is interested. So I found a schematic of a van and I kind of adapted it to this, even though it's technically a sprinter. Um, and here's the thing, there's, there's generally two designs that people go with. You either have two benches in the back and a table in between them, which is great. The only thing I noticed, it doesn't really utilize space well because if you have two overhead cupboards, then you tend to bump your head and things like that. And then the center empty space is useless because you only use it to get in and out because you're either sitting in the back or you're lying in the back. And it's just a big waste of space. The other design, which I love, is having a fixed bed with lots of storage underneath, but that requires you to have a dedicated space for sitting, eating, working, whatever, which requires a bigger van that wouldn't fit in it. And I didn't really like either of those two options, so I kind of invented my own thing, which I'm gonna talk about here. I left one side of the van for storage. I have one side of the van as a fixed bed. I have a little place in the middle where the table will go, but I lifted that entire construction onto a platform under which is the water, the power, all the other things you don't really need to access often, which means I don't have overhead cupboards, so there's no banging heads in uncomfortable positions. I'm also utilizing the upper space of the van completely because that's the space above the bed since it's raised is always used. Whether you're sitting there, whether you're lying there, you're always using that upper space. And we still have all that storage underneath this platform. So according to my calculations, I raised the platform about 40 centimeters off the ground, nearly half a meter. I, that's like, I don't know, that's roughly 15 to 20 inches. It's enough to fit your average water tank in there and your battery and a bunch of other stuff you may not be needing frequently because it's pretty difficult to access, but you have space for it. And I don't know, clothes, winter clothes, boots, things like that. That's on one side of the van. On the other side of the van, you have a raised bed, another 40 centimeters of height. Uh, you can't really tell from this angle, but as we draw this out, it'll make more and more sense as we go. Since I have roughly 3.3 meters of length, I decided to roughly split it in half where the back is the sitting and sleeping area and the front is the standing, cooking, washing, and functional area. As you can see here, it roughly splits the van into half. Now, this little section is the cupboard. It's a full height cupboard because I figured it's easier to squish into 1.3, 1.4 meters of width for the both of us, but have adequate storage space and vice versa. So this is roughly how it looks with one side being a full cupboard and the other side is actually a bench and a table which folds down into a queen size bed. Now in the front bit, you have a kitchen corner, which consists of two counters and an empty place with a tabletop. Again, really hard to explain, but this side would generally contain the sink and then this upper side would be the stove close to the opening door so that you have really good ventilation when gas is in question. Okay, now this is where it's all gonna come together because you can finally see it from the third angle. So on the left side of the van, we have a full height cupboard, which is pure storage space. And now we're gonna add the platform under which the magic happens. It's optimal storage space. It holds all our water tanks and functional systems, everything like that. And then on top of that, we actually have the bench and the table. On the right side of the van, you have the bench, which can either be a single person sleeper with a little hallway and a table. So let's add the table right here. And when we find the mechanism for it, it will also be 
a bed because that table just folds down about 30 centimeters and you have a full width bed. Again, it might not be making that much sense, but if all of this was made on the ground of the vehicle, it would be just as functional, but you'd have all this overhead space, which is wasted because you walk into the back, that's five minutes of, I don't know, 10 seconds of using the overhead space. And then as you sit down, you just have this, I don't know, two cubic meters above you, which are essentially useless, useless. So to avoid that, raise the whole thing. And now you constantly have those same two cubic meters of storage space underneath you. Sure, it's a little tiny bit more cramped, a tiny bit less convenient, but I think the give and take ratio is awesome. And, and yeah, that's enough for this short vlog. Um, we're gonna draw all this, we're gonna convert all this into a 3D model because then it's gonna be really easy to visualize what's going on.